Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. Featuring special guest, SNL alumnus, Victoria Jackson. And now, Rich Redman. This is episode two of the Rich Redmond Show. I mean, the ink is just drying here on our, our sign. We're ordering our coffee mugs, but I'm so excited today because I have one of the greatest American comedic actresses in the world, Miss Victoria Jackson, is here. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And this is wonderful. When I found out from my... Um, sidekick my co-host my man about town my producer jim mccarthy he said you know that she lives here i said what i grew up watching her every saturday night as a young man he goes nope she lives here i'm like wow and then my acting coach alan dysert said come take a class with miss victoria jackson i was like what i could take a for what eighty dollars boom i get paid him immediately it was, it was, and it was great. It was you so call it impul fun. Impulse, I, I was an impulse buy. You were like at the checkout counter of comedy. <laughs> I hope you got your money's worth. I totally did. And I have to brag on you because you don't think you're a good teacher, but you know what? You just threw us in the deep end of the pool. You said, all right, everyone. Great to meet you. Stand up comedy. Everyone who wants to go rich. I had my name tag. Give us five minutes of stand up comedy. And, <laughs> and I was like, wow, I'm not really prepared for that, Victoria. And she could, you know, just said, you know, talk about something, you know. And so I started doing things for my motivational speech. And you were like, wow, that's something you can work with. And everybody left that day with an angle mm. to at least start their journey in comedy. Awesome. Which was great. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. Well, your class was like the best. Yeah. They were all super talented, really excited to be there and um, not shy. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to teach it, but I, just, I thought, well, most comedians in movies and such, they most of them started in stand-up. Right. And how do you write a stand-up? I thought, well, most people talk about what bothers them. Right. Or what mm -hmm. they hate or something. <laughs> and I don't know. But uh. I, I, I get too nervous trying to be a teacher, so I don't really want to do it. But I think I think people, you know, the things, I think you're at a point in your career where you don't have to do what you don't want to do. You know what I mean? If you don't want to teach, you don't have to. But I think that there, you have a teacher's heart. I mean, you could recognize you could recognize that oh, right away, and I got so much out of it. so sweet. Where's the applause on here, Jim? I'm not. Oh, there you go. That's incredible. I like applause. <laughs> Who a doesn't? Sound? That's why we get into it's, this, it's because great. I think all performers, my girlfriend, my uh, girlfriend, Kara, she's a fashion designer oh. in Los Angeles, and I'm so excited to have her in my life. But she says, you know, that not in unhealthy ways, some people more than others, but I think if you're in the spotlight, there is an element of, she calls me her little show pony. She goes, she goes like, I like, you're a show pony. She's like, everything you do is like, da-da, jazz true. hands, right? And she goes, I like to dress people and be behind the scenes and be at the party, but oh. then just push you along so you can do the red carpet and you can have the spotlight. I'm like, where did this girl come from? This is amazing. But there's an element of, uh, a slight element of, of narcissism that we have to have mm. to walk out on that stage and do what we do. Yeah. Is, do you think narcissism is the new buzzword? Because everywhere I go, I'm hearing it and I've become addicted to the videos. Yeah. What videos? The narcissist video. Are they on YouTube? Uh huh. You know what else I, is on YouTube? Get ready. Uh oh. You know what? He's not a professional actor and he did a great job. He was acting like a vice president of business affairs. It's coming. Everybody Your song. And so, I, anyway, it goes. I'm oh, so my sled song's going to be on the Comedy Awards next week. Oh, so great. I, then you'll see it and you'll go, oh, I kind of remember. All right, now, do you want, a little, do you want a little music here for the oh, next sled song? It's like song? rap. It's like. Bum, it's a rap bum, song. Bum, 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 I'm tired of being a good girl. I'm tired of squeaky clean. I'm tired of being kind and polite and never being mean. I'm tired of my pleated skirts and sensible attire. I want to wrestle in the mud and dance till I perspire. And you're dancing? Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah, and I don't even remember that episode. So That's I amazing. asked you if I could get it somehow. No, no, we're, we're going to get it because I have a friend in Hollywood. His name's Michael Goodnight, and he knows how to rip YouTube videos. And then you'll have it forever. I love 
love the name Goodnight. Michael Goodnight. I want that to be my name. He, like Jim, is one of these, you know how you attract these kind of awesome, like, muses or, or spirit animals in your life, and you can't imagine your life without these people, and they just make your life better, and they have skill sets that you don't have, mm -hmm. and they complete you. And that's Jim McCarthy right there. And my Thank buddy, you. My Thank buddy, you. Michael Goodnight. So, he'll, yeah, he'll take care of that for you, but that was just so cool. And then the old band, Anton Fig and Will Lee, they just jumped right in there. Paul. Oh, that's talent. Do you know how fun it is to just go... Play this, and this great band starts playing whatever you want. Fantastic. You just lay down the tempo. You're so fun. I mean, they had to have big ears. Uh, we were talking about Letterman and his new long form show. It's yeah. a, uh, I think it's my, called My Next Guest Can I is. Can apologize for my bangs? Because you see how they're crooked? What did, are you not happy with your hairstylist? I cut them myself. Oh, you did it yourself. My hair thing is tomorrow. And I couldn't wait because they were in my eyes. So I. But did you leave a couple of them extra long? Is accident, that like a thing? By oh. accident. Was it a dark room? Mm -hmm. I did it in the car. <laughs> are you turning Japanese? <laughs> you know, my friend produced that song, Turning Japanese. I think I'm turning. Yeah. That's a great song. Yeah. But not? no, it looks good. It looks uh, jagged. It looks kind of almost like an anime I think character. My new name should be Navy Blue Goodnight. Ooh, mm. make it. It's almost like uh, you're, you're either a stripper or a, <laughs> or it could be an anime character. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll turn this a off. A 60 year old <laughs> stripper. I want to find some more videos. I wonder, you know what else is floating out there, which I, I revel in? What? Is Will Ferrell's audition for audition tape for Saturday Night Live for Lorne Michael, and he did an impersonation. Lorne Michaels, plural. Um, His actual re real last name is Lipowitz. Lipowitz? Which is actually a great name for a comedy icon, Lip of Wits. Oh, yeah, you're right. I, I guess he changed it. He just wanted to be a little bit more Hollywood. Michaels. Maybe it's a middle name. Easier to remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, well, I met him backstage at Saturday Night Live because my band did Saturday Night Live in October of 2017, and it was amazing. Really? What's really funny is that there is, you know, in the dressing room, there's like a live feed of the show that's happening. Yeah. So there was some magnificent, I'm not a sports guy, but there was a magnificent game that was being played that night. So my entire band was backstage and they had the baseball game on or the football game. And Lauren came in and says, you're not watching my show? He was so angry. But I mean, it was it was cool. They buried the, They buried the hatchet. But... Um, on those Saturday Night Live greatest hits of each of the cast members, um, they they have um, Will Ferrell's audition tape. And he did an impersonation of a cat playing with a ball of yarn. And it was so spot on. It gets me wow. every single time. What was your... Uh, did you have to do an audition? Yes. What was that like? Well, I had a fire eater for a husband. And I had a baby that was three months old. Yeah. I left him in L.A. And... Uh, Lauren Michaels' office called my home. I don't know how they got my number. They didn't go through my agent and said, do you want to audition for Saturday Night Live tomorrow? There's a ticket. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. And tomorrow. There, yeah, and there's a ticket waiting for you at LAX. And bring your characters and impressions. I didn't have any. Is this, <laughs> how many times had, had you been on Johnny Carson at this point? I had been on Carson from 83 to 86 about three times a year, maybe nine times. This is probably where he saw me. Wow, yeah, because you, you you were on there 20 times in total, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a massive accomplishment. This well, is fantastic. Well, there's people who have done more like, um, uh, oh, it's his name, I did his show. Um, it'll, Tom Dreesen. He's been on it more, and yeah. some other people, you know. But 20 but times. But it just gives you an idea. And you were always on the couch. Like, you were always... Well, the first time I wasn't, but he went like that. The first time I did stand-up for six minutes, and then he went like that, and so that means he wants you back. And then the second time I did stand-up and sat on the couch, and then the third time I did stand-up and sat on the couch, and then after that, just sat on the couch. So it was, um, he almost had a, a shorthand. That meant very good, young lady. We're going to have means, you back. Okay, you're going to have a career. Oh, okay. You're either going to or you're not going So if you bomb, you get nothing. You go maybe like a wink or a nod. Yeah. But you didn't bomb. You never did. But I'm sure there are some people that do. I don't know. Do you think? I, or maybe you know you know we're so hard on ourselves as creatives yeah. we come off the, oh my god that was horrible but the the real challenge is even when we're not happy with what we did to not do that just come because no one a lot of people don't notice True. if we've had a bad day I, I always beat myself up for like days and years afterwards like Shut -shut -shut. I should have said that word like this you know for comedic impact 
You know, it's funny, timing-wise, I did a video this morning just on my happenstance about having one of those days. You know, I've been doing voiceover for over 20 years, and yesterday I had one of those days where my mouth wouldn't work. I couldn't comprehend the words on the page. I, my, I, my tongue felt like it was just weighed 10 pounds, you know, and I'm 35 minute session that should have taken probably 20 minutes and hmm. editing and all that stuff. We get those days. Do you remember when you were practicing your drums and you have those days? Sure. You, you just, just want to throw the sticks oh across the gosh. room. Sure. Do you have, I mean, you know. I'm burping up my Diet Coke. <laughs> I love aspartame. Let's hear it for aspartame. Yeah, I'm being wild today. I usually don't drink. Yeah. But you know what I like? I, there's, I think there's a big difference between Diet Coke and Coke Zero. Coke Zero has got like a little bit of a bite to it, almost like a Dr. Pepper type mm. of vibe to mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? It may be a little bit less of an aftertaste. Mm. But when you leave your Diet Coke out in the sun and then you taste it or you just, mm. it's bad. It has to be served cold. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just a chemical concoction. So back to your audition. What was oh, that? Oh, yes. So I... I told a fire eater to watch the baby, and I had never been away from her for one night, so it was very hard, like motherhood, separation, anxiety. Mm -hmm. I had dreams and everything that I, I couldn't save her. It was, it was very hard to be a working mother. I, I think women should have babies and stay home or work, but yeah, yeah, that's not in style. But I'm telling you, I've done, I've been a working mother, and and it's there's guilt. Well, you should. I, I, the, there's a nature. You know, nature made it so that you're like this for a long time until they're... Um, my second child, I I wasn't working, and I had a lot of time, mm -hmm. and then I was frustrated. Did she that, turn out better? Did your second child um, turn out because of that? No, they're equally perfect <laughs> and successful, but the, the, when I... Yay! My daughters! They're actually awesome. I'm so proud. 33 and, and 25 what do they years do? old. What do they do? My 33-year-old daughter, Scarlett, who grew up at Saturday Night Live from age zero to six, five, she um, is an author. Her third book is coming out this month. Uh, it's called He Numbered the Pores on My Face. It's a Christian book for teenagers. Her other book was called Afraid of All the Things and how the Bible um, has a lot of verses that help us through not we shouldn't have fear or anxiety joshua 1 9 mm -hmm. uh but but man if, do if we want to look it up right. yeah. but we don't need to if we believe in god and we trust him and he's our best friend we tell him all our worries philippians 4 13 and um i went to bible college oh i know you told me that you studied and studied the bible at a very young age oh, I st i'm still studying and i have two bible studies a week and i love it so much it's so interesting archaeology is now uncovering stuff that proves that the bible is historically accurate but anyway so um long story <laughs> short i fly to new york and oh my other daughter aubrey is 25 she's in the corporate world she plays the piano writes songs it was a great dancer new she's a newlywed and she's wants to have babies now which would be great with me and i have three grandchildren wow one's adopted from chinese and um she's deaf so we are all learning sign language oh wow that's a big learning curve yeah, I love sign language, yeah. though, especially singing, mm -hmm. singing. But anyway, because um, if you're singing sign language, it's kind of like ballet, but you don't, your legs don't get tired. You know, that is a mm -hmm. that's a massive a deaf child. Yeah, and it is a commitment and, and a cultural. Well, she was only four when they got her, but you know she's disabled, so it, it changes things. But it's it's a miracle. She wow. couldn't walk. She couldn't hear. Now she has a, a thing from Vanderbilt she can hear. She knows English. She knows sign language. She can read. She can write. At four? Six. She's six, six. now. She's been here two years. Okay. It's a fantastic miracle. Wow. But anyway, um, so how I got on SNL, everyone wants to know. It's a really cool story, but it's very long. Is this a commercial time now? There's no commercials yet. Sorry. Maybe yeah. you can help us get a sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> like big.lighting.com. Or com. Diet Coke. Or Jim McCarthy voiceovers dot com. What do you yep. what do you want to push? It'll happen. I want to get voiceovers. Do you? Are you connected? Yeah. Probably not as much as you are. 
I, I, think, I, I think that if you wanted to, if you told the world that you were wanting to do it. Well, I did about eight voices today for Tori Martin. You know the redhead. Do you mm-hmm. know him? Tori mm-hmm. Martin. Yeah, he's a great writer, and I was just over at K Love, and mm-hmm. he was giving me voices to do, like a guy from New York could talk like that. And I go, why do you want me to do a man? <coughs> it like hurts my throat. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, just do it for fun. And then I had to be a dog. And then I had to be a bear. <coughs> I, I was a dog. Uh, I went, arr, arr. And then I was a dog. Arr, arr. And then I was a bear going, Our Father who art in heaven, uh, please give me some snacks today. Some, hey, boo boo. Some uh, tourists that are overweight and maybe some... <laughs> Krispy Kreme leftovers in the garbage can. You're in the right town for overweight tourists. Yeah. We just had uh, CMA Fest, so they were all here. <laughs> really? Yeah. I did, I've never been to that. <laughs> what, were you ever you been there? to CMA? I wasn't no. there this week. Uh, this uh, this year, we took the week off. I was in Los Angeles, but we usually play Are every you year. Jason Aldean's band? I w- I've been there 20 years. 20? Yeah. 20 wow. years. This is a good job in the music that's business. That's awesome. That's my 20, the magic 20, right? The 20 times on Carson. But that's Carson. so great because usually people have to, you know, keep looking for gigs. Yeah. It's a fun, fun place with the, you know, where a bunch of guys have traveled the world together and finished each other's sentences and we've been at each other's oh, that's weddings. Oh, so and, great. Yeah. And they're going to be here shortly, I think. They're going to be here. The two blondies never, in my band, Kurt yeah. Allison and Tully oh. Kenny, are going to be and here. And you never broke up like the Beatles? Never broke up? Never broke up. And Jason was just voted the Dick Clark Award for Entertainer of the Decade. <clears throat> so. And I almost bought the house across the street from Yeah, him. we've got a responsibility to keep t- taking the music to the people. That's and right. We, and we will. So, oh. so. I love how you call your first husband the fire eater. Well, sometimes I call him Satan. <laughs> but he said he's going to sue me if I keep calling him that in public. Is he still a fire eater? Yeah. Does he make he made a, a lifelong career of this? Does he does so he does like corporate parties and Yeah, but he only got like about one gig a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, he It's made, hard to raise a family on. Exactly. Yeah. He made about $100 a year. I saw his income tax return. <laughs> so so but did he take a leap forward? Is he doing better now? I don't know. I haven't talked to him yeah. for a long time. Wait, I don't talk to my first wife either because I was married. I married my college sweetheart, mm. Mary Archer. She became Mary Redmond. And after we got divorced after three years of marriage, literally she disappeared off the face of the earth. And I'm like a sitting duck on Google. Like if you want to find me, you can find me. Nothing like a she ghost. She disappeared. She just ghosted me, Maybe man. Maybe she got killed. I hope she's okay. Maybe you killed her. Oh, no. <laughs> You're a nut. Your first wife disappeared forever? Well, no, I mean, she's somewhere, but I can't find her on Facebook or anything. You know, Some people just dead. aren't into the social media thing. Yeah. But maybe you know? she went jogging and someone killed her. Jogging, as Will Ferrell says. <laughs> Yeah, he says you, a lot of weird words. You weird. gotta tell us how you got this okay, gig. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I fly to New York and I don't have any characters. I didn't have a TV growing up. I never saw SNL before. Uh, but I had been on Carson. I had done stand up and I was trying to make a living like commercials or anything I could find. So I get to New York. They put us in a hotel, the Mayflower. Yeah. And they had flown in like 12 girls from all over Canada and America. We were all against each other. They marched us down the street past the Atlas holding the world statue to 30 Rock. We go to the Phil Donahue studio, and uh, Lauren is sitting in the audience all alone with his Lornette. That's what they called his beautiful 20-year-old assistants who would bring him popcorn in a bowl and no salt on it, and he would munch on it. Mm. And uh, she, and the Lornette was behind the camera, and it was just Lauren and the Lornette. And, and then I went on, uh, up in front of them, and I did my best six minutes from Johnny Carson. I was wearing a French maid costume because that's how I first started doing stand-up. I was a cigarette girl at a 30s nightclub, and so that's what I was wearing when I started my nice. little act. And um, I did a handstand and said poetry. That was my little gimmick. I would hold it for about a minute. And because uh, I was a gymnast, because my Your dad. whole life, yeah. Well, my childhood to yeah. 18, because my dad was a coach. And uh, I had to do it. And I thought, how can I use all of this? Like, what can you do with 18 years of gymnastic training? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Poetry. So, yeah. And a French maid costume. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, duh. So um, 
So anyway, I did it for Lauren, and they called me at the hotel and said, he wants you to stay overnight, and he wants to meet with you tomorrow. And they said, come after 3. And I said, after 3? And uh, I said, when after 3? And they're going, just after 3. So I got there at 3.01. And... <laughs> And I'm like, is Lauren here? And they're like, no, he's not in yet. Uh, why don't you go to Soho and, you know, walk around and wait for him? I go, is that a department store? <laughs> and, um, you know. <laughs> That's great. I want Jim in my life. <laughs> hey, not a problem. button man. I will give you a card after this. Oh, good. So, uh, anyway, so. I waited and waited outside Lauren's office, and A. Whitney Brown sat next to me. And I said, oh, are you in the cast? And he's like, yeah, I think he'd been there a year. And I said, well, how'd you start? And he goes, I was a street performer, juggler. And um, he did the big picture on the update a few times, and then he <clears throat> wasn't on the show that as long, long. But anyway, so... You have to wait outside Lauren's office for a really long time because he's very important. Mm -hmm. Important, <laughs> not important, which is how everyone says it now. It yeah. drives me crazy. Important. 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 No one That's says called posturing, what he did. What? Yeah, he, he was he was he was setting the mood that he is in control. Wow. He was framing the argument. Is that what narcissists do? Uh yes. <laughs> so um I went in his office and he goes, You had a you had a very funny audition. Um <laughs> You're married? Mm -hmm. I said, Yes, he's a fire eater. That's my phone. You gotta write a song to that really quick. You're basic oh, you you picked daughter. up on the beat. I never understood the Hi, rhythm. Scarlet. What's happening? She put her on speaker. What's that? I don't know. Okay, can I put you on speaker? I'm doing a podcast. What? No, no, don't put me on speaker. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't want to be on speaker. Uh, uh, okay, I'll call you back. I love you, bye. Bye, Scarlett. Mm -hmm. This is so, on the Rich Redmond Show, Anything Goes. I know. Well, her <clears> new book, happens. she wanted to... That's your author daughter. Yeah, she wanted to show me her new book. He gave me pores on my face? He numbered the pores on my face because there's a Bible verse that says God knows the number of hairs on, on your head. head. Wow. Yeah. And isn't that awesome? That is nice. Good. Yeah. So it gives teenagers encouragement when they're going through their changes. Yeah. Correct? It's, everyone's so insecure. Is it a change book? Like the, the, the uh, puberty book? No, it's about... Because my parents gave me a book that was called um, What's Happening to Me? <laughs> and it was like little pictures of like sperms with smiley faces. Yeah, but you shouldn't be talking subject. about the books your parents gave you last week. I, I hate those. <laughs> what else you got on here, buddy? Oh, yeah, watch this. Shazam! Oh, I love it. That's my drum tech, John Hall. He did a good one. Oh, that's good. Shazam! That's Shazam! Gomer Pyle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Gomer Pyle said. What did he, Shazam? You're too young to know. No, Gomer I know about Pyle. the the oh, Andy, the, not the Andy Dick show. Andy the, Griffith. Yeah, also the Andy. See, you're Griffith the Andy show. Dick. Shazam, Shazam. Yeah. Good. Right. So, so okay, Lauren, so Lauren eventually he, says, "You, you got he this." Said, no, he didn't say that. Ah. He said your audition was very funny, but uh, I'm afraid you're a little bit weak in characters. Uh, I said, and he was kind of. It was a very short meeting, and he was kind of walking you to the door, like to push me out yeah. and i said oh characters well i can talk like that and he goes uh -huh. and i go i can talk like this you know be character like this and he's like um and then he i go well what do you mean he goes well like if i wanted you to be diane keaton and i go oh well i would just wear men's clothing and like look at the ground a lot and he's like, uh -huh. and he goes, or like a Midwestern housewife. And I go, oh, I, I am a housewife, and my parents are from the Midwest. And he's like, okay, thank you. And so I'm going home. I'm flying home, and I'm like, I was so close. Yeah. But I'm not going to get it, but I was so close. And I'm like, I have to pay the mortgage. I have to feed the baby. I have to support the fire eater. And so. Incredible. So I get home, and I'm vacuuming, and I rented some eight trap. Uh, no, remember, uh, what do you call it? VHS? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was beta at the time? Yeah. It, was it a beta machine? Might have been. Yeah. It was one of those. Yeah. It was what you got from the store that, that well, it doesn't been exist a, anymore. It would have been a VHS tape, yeah. Yeah. So I got some of those, and I rented Diane Keaton, 
and um, Tina Turner, and uh, you know, I, I thought, well, then I and I realized, no, first I realized I'm going to be on Johnny Carson in two weeks. Then I realized I could continue my audition for Lauren Michaels on Johnny Carson. Exactly. And then I rented the VHSs of you know people I could imitate and then I asked the tonight show if I could continue my audition and do some characters and see if again uh, Johnny could guess them mm -hmm. so I went out there I have this all on tape and everything yeah. and I Johnny said oh so you're auditioning for a show and <clears throat> he didn't say the name of it he didn't want to get sued or something he goes and you have to do characters or impressions I go yeah Johnny let me try some on you and see if you can guess who they are so I went Boy, the way Glenn Miller played, so I made the hit parade. And he goes, Edith Bunker. And I go, yeah. And then I go, oh, Johnny, I don't know why I'm here. I don't have anything to say. I don't. And he goes, T uh, Terry Gar. And I go, yeah. Because <laughs> she used to do that all the time. And then I go, um, uh, what's love got to do? Got to do with it. And I, and I started doing that dance she does by the fence <clears throat> in that video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And he goes, Tina Turner. And I go, yeah. And then and then I go, well, John, why do you want to work for my company? And he goes, uh, Betty Davis? And I go, no. And he goes, I don't know. Who is it? And I go, I made her up. And then everybody laughed. And then Johnny laughed. And he goes, well, how am I supposed to guess her if you made her up? And I go, it was a joke. And it was just such a great moment. And then I thought, I know I got SNL now. So, but then my manager at the time, who is Dolores Robinson, mother of Holly Robinson Pete, she, uh, you know, I said, Dolores, what if, what if Lauren didn't see that? And she goes, Well, we'll get him the tape. We'll get him the tape. And so she put it in his mailbox in his LA hotel where they tracked him down. And and then, uh, so then about ten days later, I got a call on my Kermit the Frog phone. <laughs> The gigantic bag phone, like a cell phone? It was a no, telephone, like the olden days that you yeah. held up to your ear with the thing. But the cord? The cord? But the cord? Yeah, like Snoopy phone. It was oh, a cord, yeah. but like Kermit was crossing his legs and the receiver yes. stuck on his foot. Awesome. It's a really good, cute phone. Oh, you pay a lot of money for that now if you found I it. I know, I wish did I it, still had Did it do a Kermit voice ring? Like, hi ho, Kermit the Frog. <laughs> good voice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you wear Christopher Walken? I don't know what you're talking about. It's crazy. Doing the walking. Might as well try running. It's crazy. It's That's actually, crazy. you know the funny thing? that I'll tell that story, but you can, you can remind me to tell the evolution of my walk-in impression. And you probably, you know the person that I got it from, most likely. Do it now. Oh, tell it? Yeah. You know Jay Moore? Yeah. Yeah. He does one of the, like, nails... Christopher Walker. Yeah. He's one of the best impressions out there. And I listened to him on a um, on an album that he was on. And I did I I, found, I have a knack to hear people. I can either impersonate them or I can impersonate somebody who is impersonating them. Put yeah. the camera on you. No one can see you. Don't I got I'm I'm, oh, I'm watching. Okay. He's actually editing on the fly, yeah. which is incredible. Okay. You I'm, see I'm, the camera's I'm, right there and he's controlling it from his iPhone. Yeah. This is the world we're I'm living doing. in. So uh, he, I used to work at CBS Radio in Las Vegas. Jay Moore was, was a regular. He would make the, the radio station tours whenever he'd play Paris. He'd do the stand-up out there. And actually, you guys did a run out there, too. You did, you did it with um, Kevin Nealon, uh, Norm MacDonald, and, and like the Saturday Night Live tour yeah. back in, I want to say, 03 or 04. That must have been fun. Yeah. yeah. But you were, I remember you being a part of it. We might have actually met then, too. Wow. But it was uh, the CBS radio stations, KLUC, KXNT, I remember Extreme that. Radio. And uh, so Jay would come in, and all these people would always come through my studio to record liners. You know, hey, this is Jay Moore. You're listening to mm -hmm. AM840 KXNT. And <clears throat> I just started going, you know, I said, you know, it's funny. I, I actually emulated your impression of walking. And he goes, oh, let me hear it. So I started doing it. And he goes, he's like, and he starts coaching me on it. He says, incredible. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. And uh, we ended up doing like dueling walk-ins on KLUC. I just happened to take it and run with well, it. Let me hear it. That's funny. That's what awesome. do you want to hear? And what That's did crazy. he say? What did he say? You like, may be a fat boy slim, but take the scrum. 
So what, what did he? What was his advice? Like uh, you're too many oh, syllables. He was like he was like you know he's a little bit too Brooklyn that you got coming out of you. I said I said mm. dude, it's me doing you doing walking. Mm. I'm not exactly you yeah. Know, back right. off more. Yeah, come on more. This is uh, me doing Dana doing Lauren. <laughs> so Victoria, um, your audition was very funny. Yeah. I'm doing Dana doing Lauren. Oh my god, Dana keep in touch with Carvey. Them? Dana Carvey. I never see them much now, but I did do stand up with Neilan and couple of them mm-hmm. uh, in the 2000s and back there. <laughs> back there. But yeah. the end of the, my thing is that they called me Kermit the Frog and they said, congratulations, you're in the cast of Saturday Night Live. There's a plane waiting for you at LAX tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Mm-hmm. And um, like Mission Impossible where the smoke comes out of the... And so I, I said, oh, thank you. Hung up the phone. I go, ah! And then the baby woke up and started crying. And then the fire eater threw up on the bed because his stress makes him very... He, the fire eater threw up because he realized he'd have to take care of the baby? Maybe. Or work harder or I something. Don't I don't know. You would have to live in your shadow. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> now, I don't have a shadow anymore. But now your new husband, that you you guys have been married 20 years? 27. 27 years, and he was a Miami police force. 27 home? years. Of but he's retired, right? Of fame. Well, it's, you know, when you're married to a police officer or a firefighter or a paramedic, it's a dangerous job. You don't know if they're coming home, you right? You don't know if they're going to hit you or kiss you. <laughs> he's like this all the time. Like, just posturing, <laughs> just like looking, looking. I don't know. He look, that's what Michael Del Giorno said. He said, I never know if your husband's going to kiss me, no, hug me or punch me. <laughs> And I went, that's brilliant. That's exactly <laughs> what he looks like. Oh he my he God. has big, big muscles. Yeah. And he has a lot of great qualities. Is that what attracted you? The, his body first? Maybe. Yeah. But I, um, no, no. Actually, I met him in seventh grade. Really? Oh. We were, we knew each other since we were 13. So you knew each other long before the fire, fire eater. Long before I was famous or, yeah. you know. But anyway, we have a very volatile marriage and we're we're both christians so we try to make it work out but um it, it's not easy what's the volatility is. what is that like because are you married i am going on How, almost 20 years 20 that's great mm-hmm. my parents have been married 51 years 51 years and they're yeah. 72 and 74 yeah well after that they don't look it after like 30 years i think it's just autopilot yeah i don't know are they volatile no, they're not volatile. I mean, my mom's passionate. There's still chemistry There's, there? Yes, my dad. Mm. I, I would assume that my mom is crazy about my dad, but my dad is crazy about my mom, Patty. Patty, oh, I lo- he oh, loves Patty. So you, know, you know, And he buys her jewelry, and they go on cruises. Oh. And But then there's that give that? and take. Well, we're getting to the point now where with a little extra income, we go camping a lot. That's like, that's our thing. I like camping. With the family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. We take the family camping. How many kids? Three. Uh, soon to be 13, 11, and 7. Nice. That's why he's always working. Yeah. He got mouths to feed. But you know what? Yeah. I mean, I get to do voiceover for a living. I mean, That's how, it. How I know. It's not like you're... It's not like I'm digging ditches, which exactly. I did. I used to do that. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. That wasn't fun. I mean, I give, I give people... Um, Advice on having a successful life, and you can get this on Amazon. Crash Course for Success by Rich Redmond and Paul D. Pan. Five five ways to supercharge your personal professional life. But the one way I cannot, the thing that I can't get together in my life is that it's just so hard to be married to a music man, like Elton John says. I've been married Mm -hmm. twice. I gave it to, you know, and I was a good husband, but it's just like not for the faint of heart. I'm gone all the time. Right. And then. You know, my last wife said, even when you are home, yeah. you are not home because yeah. you're off to re- at recording sessions and rehearsals. Right. And so it's tough. You're, you're it running a business, hard. Rich yeah. Redmond Inc. I know. I'm the right. chief bottle washer mm. yeah. and CEO. It's like Pinocchio when the actor types tried to lure him into the bad world. Remember Pinocchio? Oh, yeah. 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 An actor's life for me. Eve, hey, fiddle dee That's where they're on the, uh, was it the pirate ship? Uh, something like that. They're like where they can do anything they want, eat yeah, all the candy, you know, right? and yeah, you know. like Hollywood. Now, when you were yeah. coming into the house, you noticed that my creatures from the Black Lagoon movie poster because I'm a huge horror film monster fanatic. And you said your dad was in that film. Yeah. That's crazy. His only film. He was the extra who was the underwater swimming guy in black trunks. One of the two who was chasing the creature. 
That's amazing. And they had to squirt milk. It was supposed to be poison to kill a creature you know, squirting milk. Wow. So it would look a certain way on film. Yeah. Now, where was that film? Because you're from... In Florida. Okay. You're from Florida. Yeah, I'm from Miami, but he was uh, he was from Chicago, and he liked <clears throat> bikinis, probably. And uh, he... I can't he, blame him. I mean... He, 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 <laughs> I'm going to take these away from you. I wrote a song called Bimbos in Bikinis. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. That's on the internet somewhere. Yeah. You got to find it. We got to get Michael Goodnight to get you a copy of it. Oh, I. <laughs> okay. And then you know what's really funny is. Navy Blue Goodnight. Your 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 email address is so funny because it's. Ukulele guy. I know, but it's. Hey, we're not supposed to tell people. I know, but not. I didn't yeah, tell them that. Know, they don't know. They don't where know where it's going. That's true. Yeah. But it's hard to spell ukulele. There's two different ways that are correct. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you, do you keep practicing your, do you write, that's what you write on, right? Your ukulele? Yeah. You know, drumming that, is very hard. Hey, that's very. <laughs> it's very, very difficult. Drumming? Really. Yeah. Yeah, well, you do. So? We're the extreme multitaskers drummers. We're doing four things at the same time. Right. But it feels yeah. like one. Well, if, if you do it right. Yeah. You know, it's, four it, things. it's four things at the same time coming wow. together in perfect harmony wow. to create. And we know we're doing our job if people your are moving. feet and moving. your hands. If people mm-hmm. are dancing. If people are smiling. If or people are. Do you ever get off the beat? I, I mean, sometimes if you're underslept or like overly tired, or, sometimes you can have like a a, a uh-huh. brain fart where there's like a there's like a mismatch between your mind and your body. And and it, 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 wow. it, yeah. you ever find yourself doing that live where you you hear the click and you're a little bit behind, or does that never happen for you anymore? You I mean, have I, a click in your well, ears? The, there's yeah the click track. You have a click track telling you to stay. Yeah. Well, it helps because that's well, that's cheating. That's cheating. It's just I didn't know you had a click track well, in your ear. Most modern music is ninety nine point nine percent of modern music is made to a click track for the last thirty years. But you know what? He could keep time like Without a like a clock. Yeah, a good drummer you know? it needs to be able to keep time no matter what. Yeah, he doesn't need to. But the way we do it and most big touring acts, you need to have that because the lighting and the video and all that stuff is all tied to that oh. code. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's big business, you know. Wow. Yeah. Did not know that. It's crazy. Today mm-hmm. I was singing into my iPhone my new song I wrote called Dear God, Love Me. And um, Is it comedic or is it real? Is it, it's, is it it's serious? Not, it's not comedy. Heartfelt. Yeah. yeah. And um, my friend, Jim, he, he has all the machines, so he puts <laughs> all the... You know, and he goes, do it to a click track. I'm like, I got a click track right here. You know, it's called my heart, <laughs> yeah. my soul. So I was doing it like this. People wag their fingers, tell me that I'm wrong. Turn their head away, say I don't belong. Uh, up their ears, they don't want to hear my song. But I'm doing the best I can, dear God. Thank you. And uh, I, and so I did it with my own inner click track. No, you have great mm-hmm. sense of time. You would be easy to back up. I've backed up a lot of female singers that are nowhere nearly as good as you. Thank Look you. Look at that, because you're an entertainer. Mm-hmm. You're a thespian and a musician. Whoa. Right? I don't have any vibrato. How I, did this all start, this whole acting thing and mm-hmm. you know being, what i mean being, it's like it's all, almost you worked for it it seems but i mean it, it kind of just happened well you told me time. rich there's 10 types of comedy you were so self-deprecating you said there's okay. 10 types of comedy i suck at nine of them I that's did? what you told me she said which one am i good at you said i'm good at being me and then that's where the funny i know how to be funny by being a heightened version of myself which oh. is amazing advice wow what a good teacher I am. You are an amazing teacher. <laughs> He's telling you you should keep going with it. You should keep teaching. Uh, you don't have to have your own comedy school. You could just be a guest, drop in at Alan's class, or drop in at Regina Morris class. or. Hey, then there'll know, be Regina. all these little Victoria Jacksons running around. I won't get any more work. <laughs> well, flattery yeah. is... Uh, but you is, have the equity and the horsepower to be able to do it. Yeah. You have the experience and the well, notoriety. Well, here's one good thing. And you could charge My stand-up? more than $80. Really? Yeah. Yes. Oh, totally. Totally. Well, I only yeah. got half of that. That's a that's a three hundred. Alan, <laughs> that's a, a four hundred dollar class right there. That's a definitely a four hundred dollar. class. Okay, yeah. so what was I going to tell you? Um, I forgot. No, the one thing I'm good at is playing an airhead. Mm-hmm. A ditzy airhead. 
that's my strongest talent. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I don't have talent. But anyway, wh- when did it start? Yeah. When did you start being a performer? I started playing drums in 1976. So people were like, "How long have you been playing drums?" I'm like, "Wow, um, 42 years." Wow. Yeah, and then you know, I mean, what made you start? I think you know how we have a calling. I think it's just like it's just a, a gift. And then the sooner you can recognize it, the better, because the earlier you recognize it, the harder you can jump in head first and start putting in the hours. And yeah, that's what my dad told me. He goes, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because the earlier you can start training for it, the better. Amazing. <clears throat> when I was 16, when he asked me, and I go, I don't know, I want to be Maria in The Sound of Music. And he goes, that sounds like an actress. And um, I never thought there was a, actually a thing you could be Maria in the Sound of Music. I thought that was magic. And um, I wanted to ha- marry the captain and have a mansion and seven children matching clothes, singing, harmonizing on the mountain with my ukulele. <laughs> you kind of pulled it off. And so what was the, where was the college? Where, where did you, where, where, did uh, you study like acting in college? Uh, well, I first registered at Miss Foreman's Acting School in North Miami, Florida, and she was really old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, She's uh, gone now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was three when I first sang in front of an audience, and I think that I got the bug. Yeah. But I really got the bug at Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina, when I was in my first play. I didn't really. I kind of accidentally fell into it because my friend was in, and I made the audience laugh for the first time, and I was like, it was a drug. Mm-hmm. I was like. I gotta get that again. Making people laugh. laugh. Sure. And it was just, co- is it commercial? No, 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 no. I was gonna make a point, but go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, we were talking before, being a stand up, a lot of the people that, that get into it seem to just, you know, a lot of stand up is based on misery of life, you know, and just, just bad stuff. Yeah, you know? I think a lot of comedy is based on. And um, most of the comedians are kind of miserable. You know and I, mean? I think all good art comes from pain. Sure. Yeah. The songs breakup song mm-hmm. the best art you play a country song backwards you get your dog back you get your wife back you get your truck back right yeah my uh, That's one funny i never heard that the one. year of my divorce uh it was like my <laughs> wife checked out and my cat died it was just like a different version oh. of a country song <laughs> sassy the cat i had her for 15 years hey you think it's funny that my ex was a fire eater. oh i think it's hilarious your ex was a psychic that's right <laughs> hey you know we it's crazy Psychic. Oh, yeah, you did say that's crazier than eating fire. Talking to dead people. How far did the thing go down? Like, well, it's a trick, but he didn't tell me the trick except that uh, you put. Lighter- it's not going the side of your face. No, no it's no. <laughs> da da. <laughs> no, it, you put lighter fluid on the torch thing. Yeah, you know, and the fire burns the lighter fluid. The heat goes mostly to the lighter fluid. And I think the surrounding flames get near your mouth. Oh, and then he exhales maybe lighter fluid to make mm-hmm. it go. I, I oh, don't yeah. know. I yeah, don't yeah. exactly know. He, yeah. He didn't practice. That's a tough thing to practice. Uh, he he did have um, Sucret's disposable Bic lighters and fire retardant hairspray. It's like, who's the first no, person to have to that? No, I'm just kidding. That was a joke, John. Yeah, I know. John you know, it's like the first person I mean, to Simmons eat an oyster. Gene did it, I think. You know, Gene yeah. Simmons from Kiss, I think, did it, or Paul Stanley, or one but of But But somebody at some point had to do it for the first time, yeah. right? And, and then, it's like, I'm going to take this flaming sword and ram it down my throat, and I'm going to, you know. It's really desperate need right. for attention. <laughs> Maybe he's a narcissist, too. Probably. Narcissist <laughs> is akin to the word entrepreneur in this day and age. Yeah. Everyone is. Everyone using, Yeah. You know? Well, he is Mr. Show Pony. I'm a show pony. He is an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> he's an author. And he has a podcast. He's playing the drums. And what else are We're you doing? We're doing it all. We're it's kind of like what you need to do in this day and age, though, man. Yeah. You know? Do the motivational speaking, I, which we get to mix with music, which is always fun. Mm. I do voiceovers. I produce podcasts. I produce videos. Um, and that's just on one hand. On the other hand, I actually own an electric and lighting LED lighting company big dot lighting dot com everyone Our first sponsor yeah well yeah because the world is going LED like yeah. poor Thomas Edison I mean he changed the world and now oh he robbed it from Tesla that's what mm. I was gonna say yeah <coughs> was I mean, that worth one of these time for us to Shazam go. that's right what else we got. 
A lot of things that, that indicate a bad joke, apparently. That's, I think you have a great show going Well, here. thank you yeah, so thank much. You. Um, did, what was it like? What was your experience with your fellow cast members? Like, you know, oh. like Chris Farley. Okay. And, yeah, talk about, uh, okay. and poor Phil Hartman. Well, Phil Hartman was hard to get to know. Yeah? Like, I, yeah, I didn't, um, and he, like him and Jan Hooks, they could play anybody, mm. but you're like, who are they? It was like interesting, yeah. and me, I'm like so me that whatever I'm doing has me all over it probably, but um, yeah, they were like really good actors where they became another person, and Jan Hooks and Phil Hartman were like the glue of the cast. I mm. well, they used to say Phil was the glue, but Jan could do anybody. She died of cancer two oh. years ago. Oh really? I had cancer. Mm. Uh, I know. Four Did, years yeah. ago, you kicked it in 2015. God right? bless you. Well, thank God you, God. You, yeah. uh, um, I don't know if it'll come back, but I'm very happy. Well, I'm a Christian, so I kind of believe that for me to live is Christ, to die is gain, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So it's a win-win. But right. it's really cool that he healed me. You know. And my so, mom kicked it in 86. What? Yeah, so she's a been a survivor all these That's years. That's awesome. It's and they totally didn't have possible. as good medicine back then. Oh, no, no. It's such a mysterious thing. It's different for everybody, and... And they don't know how to what it is yet, but you know. <clears throat> anyway, Vanderbilt Breast Clinic was super great people, mm -hmm. super p sweet. Oh, yeah, so Vanderbilt nice. is kind of like our cedar cyanide. Oh, they're I so would think. nice, very loving, and I kind of like the attention in a strange way. Sure, but anyway. What were we talking, talking about? about? Phil was the Cast glue. Him. Okay, yeah. and no. so uh, Chris Farley was very shy. What until he performed. He was even shy performing. If mm. you think about it, mm. wasn't he always going? You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know. You remember the Beatles? Remember yeah. when you were in the Beatles? Remember that time you played on yeah. the Ed Sullivan Show? Uh, <laughs> that was awesome. And especially around girls, he was very shy around girls. Mm. And uh, mm, let's see, Dana Carvey was so sweet and. Dana and John Lovitz and Kevin Nealon were the nicest to me, and they tried to write me into their sketches because I didn't really know how to write a sketch very well. Right. So, like, I'd hang out around them and go, can you give me some lines? And then, like, they... So, Hans and Franz wrote me in as Roseanne, and uh, she kind of talks like that, all that crap, <laughs> and And um, NPR. And then I got way. to do Zsa, Zsa Darling, I worked all over the world. Uh, I, I went to a dialect coach to try to learn how to do that accent because this was all new to me. But it was like comedy college, you know? Mm -hmm. It throw you in. Did you guys have? Um, did you guys use a lot of cue cards back then? Because yes. when we visited, when I visited the set, the first thing I noticed was that they were leaning on those cards. Yeah. Because you were not only choosing the skets that week up to the last second. Right. Right? Right. Like, we submit our ideas on Wednesday. Well, Monday we had a meeting with the host and talked about ideas. Tuesday, writer's night, all night. Wednesday, you submit them, and Lauren and the host pick their favorite sketches, and then Thursday and Friday you block them for the camera, and then Saturday you do them at dress rehearsal, and whatever didn't work lauren cuts out and then there's tears and cursing and because people have you know sometimes it's a good sketch against another good sketch and one has to go and there's a lot of you know sleepless nights put into it and so um the other cast members were um so, mm, mm, well when i was an old cast member the new ones were adam sandler david spade and Chris Farley, and they were like the new guys. So they kind of hung out in a clique. And Jan and Nora kind of had a little clique that I wasn't invited into. Mm. And um, and then Lovitz, he wrote Victoria's Secrets for me. And uh, Dana was just sweet and happy all the time. And That's so sweet. I really want to get to know Dana or meet him at some point because he uh, plays drums. Oh, he yeah, did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. I knew he was a musician. Him in Wayne's brother. world, he played the big old. I like to play the drums. Oh. Yeah, King. white but, snake kid. That and then he did that rock and roll character, chopping broccoli. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> him and his brother, they love this one. Oh, good. Eric Clapton. Him and his brother love Eric Clapton. I know that. Yeah. 
Wow. But it sounds like you were just like a secret weapon. Like they would just add you like seasoning to everybody's scenes and you were Need the, a little blonde. You were the blonde. In that one. Need a little airhead in that one. That's Which great. Fine. And that was uh, six years that you were on there. Mm-hmm. And but, then and then Hollywood called. Yeah. Like you were look at these movies. You had <sighs> Baby Boom, Family Business. I love you to death. I love that movie. You saw it? Oh yeah, many times. That was a good movie. Kevin Klein. Yeah, yeah. Right. and um, Tracy, Tracy Ullman. Ullman. What a talent. Yeah, I forgot about Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Did you enjoy making You were the film? love interest, right? Uh, yeah, it was hard part for me because they wanted me to be naked. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, but mm-hmm. I didn't mean it. But I really, I was working my way but is in your my- is it in your contract when those things happen and you're like, can we? Yeah. Yeah. It was, but I didn't feel like I had the power to, to tell the truth and say no. Because I wasn't a movie star or anything. And you wanted to work. Yeah, I had to pay the mortgage and the baby feed the baby. And uh, I remember I cried. I can't cry on cue very good, but I did at the audition for Lawrence Kasdan. Mm-hmm. And I was playing the lover of the cheating Kevin Klein character, yes. and it's so not me. And yeah. it, I was really trying hard to be an actress. And uh, anyway, so we got on the set. And I go, um, Lawrence, um, um, I I don't feel comfortable um, taking my clothes off. Um, um, could we like? Um, could I just um, wear a big t shirt or like? It, it was supposed to look like, like I a was man's going shirt. to bed mm-hmm. with Kevin Klein in some way. Like people couldn't guess unless you're naked, right? And so La- Lawrence Kasdan. Or I guess people call him Larry. I don't know. He, you know, like time is money, and the lighting is going up, and the sound is going up, and and and, and it was like pressure. And he's like, <sighs> and he's thinking, you know, oh, I hired this stupid idiot. He could have found thousands of women to be naked, and he got this one stupid Baptist girl. And so I, uh, I'm, I'm like, uh, I just, I can't really remember my lines good when I'm naked and um so like so kevin was listening kevin klein he was just married to phoebe cates at the time and uh he goes he goes well i'll be naked or whatever i don't know if he used the word naked he goes i'll take my pants off and i'll wear my apron and i'll i'll bend over in front of the camera or whatever it's great and so he took it what a gentleman that's so sweet he took it off of me I wore a big blue T-shirt, man's T-shirt, yeah. and and he actually had his little butt showing the whole day we were shooting. Something tells me he has a hairy butt. I don't remember, yeah. but I really don't want to know. But I felt so intimately close to him after eight hours of seeing his butt, and then and then I was on the stairmaster next to Phoebe in the gym, and it was like, oh, it was just with your husband. I didn't say it. Yeah. No. But well, she probably she didn't say anything. She knew it was all in day's work, right? Yeah, but it's creepy. You Would know? you do a nude scene, Rich? Uh, no, I don't. Nah, I don't think so. You wouldn't. Not full frontal for half a million. That's not enough money. Seven fifty. <laughs> no, no, I, no. I'm not a full frontal guy. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a I'm a grower, not a, a shower. million. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> a lot um, of money. That's funny. But but I, but I loved that. I loved that movie. <laughs> and well, so what was your time like? In Hollywood, because I'm a part-time Angelino, I live over by the Hollywood Bowl, and my girlfriend oh, lives I over by the Four it. Seasons in West Hollywood, so I can get around L.A. now without, uh, you know, you my... Know secret paths to get away yeah, from the traffic? Yeah, you know, it's like Betty oh. White says, take the Fountain Freeway. I don't know how it is, but Fountain, you can always use Fountain, fountain. to... Just get to where you gotta There's go. There's one empty freeway. It's the one. It might be that one. I forget. It's like fountain. Fountains. Are, fountain is just a street. A street. But you right. Can, right. Whoosh, right. For whatever reason, it's the. And then bizarre. there's this one empty freeway. Uh, it goes to I forget the name. I've been away so long. Yeah. But I'm going this August. I'm gonna do a pilot for a comedy cooking show. Great. That's awesome. So are you gonna be slicing and dicing? Yes. Are you a bad cook? Do they yes. want bad cooks? Yes. That's where the comedy comes from. Yeah. So you'll be slicing onions and crying? Well, well, I don't slice. You see, my dish is Swiss cheese and spinach, and I eat it with my hands fast. Swiss cheese is I, used as a wrap, kind of. I just, just shove it in my mouth. So I was just going to go, this is what I eat every day, and I'm calling it the uh, Super Popeye Spinach Explosion. Wow. Yeah. Is that what got you the part? 
the the, the no, Popeye explosion. They just gave yeah. me the part, and that's then great. I told them. That's what network is that going to be, Mom? Maybe or they just, it's going to be a pilot, and they're going to pitch it to networks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but my next job, I'm doing a low budget movie in Michigan. I just got the part yesterday, That's and great. I know I sound kind of drunk right now because I'm kind of tired mm-hmm. because I did those voices today. That takes a lot out of you. Really, it does. does. Absolutely, it looks easy. No voiceover. I have a friend who's got a a a cartoon in the works. I have two friends that have cartoons that are that are getting picked up, and they are pitching me as a as voice talent because I can do. You know, they're like you could you could be Steve the Snare Drum, and so like I like I am I'm fearless, man. Throw me in the deep end of the pool, I will swim. You were very funny in our class. Well, thank you. Like you're a natural. You have got the it factor. Oh, you are sweet. I'm gonna I'm gonna try. I'm gonna take your advice. I'm gonna put three minutes of comedy together on a subject that I know which you said was the music business there's no comedians doing what's the deal with for the music business that's you good, know what I mean it's like, a good idea yeah it's like it's like because because you can't poop on a tour bus you could pee on a tour bus and mm. that's just part of our lives we've accepted it but mm. you're like what and that's everyone right. I tell is like you can't poop but what do you do you just hold it to the gas station yeah you you've got to do a stand up about the life of a musician. Nobody's done that. Nobody you has. um, you help me I, write it. We could talk about it, and then you can help sure. me refine my act. No, I'll. Yeah. Yeah, she's like she's like. Did you, you hear, hear that? that? Did you hear that, Alan? Yeah. He could probably help too. I know. I I don't know. Am I that funny? How are we doing on time? I don't want to keep this gym lady too long. Oh, it's been 55, 55 minutes, minutes and 49 seconds. This is yeah. incredible. Well, we, I mean, we talked about your upbringing. I'm, we I'm talked curious. about the fire eater. We talked about yeah. your children. Oh, oh, what are you curious about? Yeah. Uh, UHF. I loved that um, movie growing up with Weird Al. Oh, wow. Yeah. How was Weird Al as yeah. an actor? I got a crush on him. Dude, yeah. he's great. But, yeah, he, um, he is a very unique person, yeah. Yeah, he's just like the guy on the movie. Oh, really? Well, I mean he he came up through radio. He wrote parody songs for oh, yeah, Doctor yeah. Demento. Yeah. That's, That's right. Wrote. And um, um, well, he didn't write them for him. He just wrote them. Doctor Demento, Demento was let them. him play it. Yeah, them. I'm um, pals with Bermuda Schwartz, the drummer. You are? Yeah, all of us drummers are in a fraternity, a global fraternity. Really? We all know each other. We all champion. Well, the funny each thing other. is, I'm sitting here one day. Uh, my wife and I came to Rich's house. He was having a get together and this gentleman walks in and he's like, Hey, you know, Rich knows everybody and he treats everybody like they're, you know, like, like us. Uh-huh. And, uh, it turns out it's, uh, you know, Sandy Gennaro Who's and I'm going, uh, he's Cindy he, he played for, for Cindy Lauper. Uh, yeah. And I'm going, Holy crap. You I saw him on MTV. It. Right. Yeah. Growing up. He lives right up the street. Met Troy Lucetta through you. I'm going, I used to watch your Tesla. The drummer for Tesla. Yeah. It's so funny. I just tell everybody, you know, if you if you mind your P's and Q's and you're a good person, eventually all your heroes become your colleagues. Wow. You know, and and this is what's so exciting for me. And I love I've loved talking to you about comedy and acting because I really you know, um, oh, I have some f- exciting news. Since I met you, um, I was on this TV show called Happy on the Sci Fi Channel, and I happy. got Happy is the New Black. Yeah, so I played a cop, and it was fun. I had tons of lines. Oh, I got my SAT card. You did? That's so awesome. Isn't that fun? I'm so exciting. Oh, that's so awesome. It's so hard to get. Well, now people will take me seriously. I think that if you have your oh. card, the people go, oh, okay. Yeah, you're legitimized. You're legitimized. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. It's so hard to get. It's a good union. It really it's, is. Oh, yeah, because they, they took money out of all my checks, and I didn't really think about it, mm-hmm. and now I have a pension. It's amazing. They're giving it back to me. I'm nice. like, I never thought about getting old. I just... You just did it. I thought every job was a, a fluke accident, so... Yeah. I just wanted to tell you when you're saying that the drummer has to do four things. Yeah. My husband was a helicopter pilot for the police, mm. and he had to do four things. Yeah, pedals, just pedals. Pedals, hand. There's two hand things. And he had to look down, chase the bad guy, keep the thing in the air. So Helicopters scare me because I always think to myself, there's no risk of my head being chopped off. I'm only 5'7", but like it just it's over your head, and I'm just like, oh, I get to see my head being just chopped off by that thing. Well, I hated the part it's where- reasonable. Your feet are touching a piece of plywood, and yeah. underneath that is nothing. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shazam! Yeah. <laughs> 
You guys have a great show. It's so well. Thank, thank you. you. So you are you are literally you're going to be our you are going to be our first episode. And then Phil said I can come at eleven, and so it was just like let's we're with our crazy schedules. We're trying to shoot three four episodes a day when I'm in Nashville, mm-hmm. and we could just kind of trickle them out. But yeah. So fun, and it's just such an honor to have you because you were in America's living rooms. I mean, literally, I used to watch you on the boob tube with the rabbit ears, and mm. and it's the same thing, you know. I mean, I would like to think that maybe I could say, "Hey, uh, Victoria, I'm in your neighborhood. L- let's go to Starbucks." I mean, I'll try. I got your email address. You're too busy. No, if, if you're ever in her neighborhood, you better be coming by to see the kids. Oh, you're, definitely. You're a mile away. Okay. Yeah, we'll sure. have a, we'll have you both over for a fire. Yeah, he has nice fire pits, and we sit around and drink bourbon or wine. And his wife is an amazing chef and just Aww. fantastic and massage therapist. That's right. She'll make you see dead relatives. She's got what? <laughs> She's got a lot of hus- side hustles as well. No, yeah. She's a mom. Do you like to be found on the internet? Do you have a dot com or are you on Facebook or Twitter? I have VictoriaJackson dot com. Mm-hmm. And uh, my Twitter, I just lost the info for, and so I have 15,000 followers I can't find. That's great. Well, no, I mean, you can't find your, your login information? I can't find it. Just write, write to them. Write to Twitter. I did. <laughs> yeah. They don't answer. Twitter at Twitter.com. Mm. They don't answer. Info at Twitter.com. Interesting. Uh, so, you, and then Instagram. you- Instagram. You're on Instagram? Mm-hmm. As what? Just your name? Yeah. Uh, official or Victoria Jackson. Do you official. have the little blue check? What's that? That's that makes you. That's like your sad card. It lets you know, know the world that it's really you. I didn't know. That. I know. We're Jim and I are trying to get our little blue check. I'm trying. I, I submitted yours. Thanks. I'm Thanks, some Jim. Social media. Product. So you're going to be in an indie film and in a cooking show. This is yeah. great. This is so awesome. Yeah. And you might keep teaching comedy. I think and, you should. And I might ring, maybe only private lessons. I might ring you up to see if I'm on track with my three minutes, and then I'm going to go down to Zany's. I'm going to do my three minutes. I'm going to film it, and oh. then I'm going to turn that into six minutes, and then the ten minutes, and then the twelve I love, minutes. Yeah. I love your get up and go. Oh my god, we got to grab life by how the you, you know what? How do you go to sleep at night with all that energy? You know, it's really crazy. I went to go get my hearing test how yesterday, do you turn it off? and they gave me a, a steroid shot. Like, oh, no, it, you on steroids. I know. I said, can I work out? Like, <laughs> Hans and Franz. Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> well, Run to the chopper. What a real honor to have you here. Thank you so much for coming by. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Victoria Jackson, one of the greatest female American comedians on the planet. Of course, my co-host, Jim McCarthy, JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. Check him out for all your voiceover needs. He produces podcasts. Of course, Big Dot Lighting. Rich Redmond here. I'm your host, Tune in next time. We're going to keep bringing you the good stuff. We'll see you. Thanks for tuning in. This has been The Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.